Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving elastic collisions. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that in a game of bowls and bowl of mass, one kilogram is travelling at a speed of 2 metres per second when it hits a stationary jack straight on. The jack has a mass of 300 grams. The bowl continues to move straight on with a speed of 1.2 meters per second after the collision. Part A says to sketch the situation. So we've got our bowl of mass 1 kilogram moving to the right at 2 meters per second, and that's going to collide with a jack of mass 0.3 kilograms, just converting our 300 grams into kilograms, which is stationary at 0 meters per second. That's before the collision, and then after the collision, we've got our bowl of mass 1 kilogram moving to the right at a speed of 1.2 meters per second, and our jack of 0.3 kilograms is going to move to the right with some unknown speed v2. Part B says to calculate the speed of the jack after the collision, so that's the speed v2. So to do this, we need to use the principle or law of conservation of momentum, so we can write down that total momentum before equals the total momentum after. Writing down this in the expression form, we have m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now we cannot simplify this expression any further like we did for the ones on inelastic collisions, but we can just start substituting in the numbers from this point. So we've got 1 times 2 plus 0 0.3 times 0 is equal to 1 times 1.2 plus 0 0.3 times v2. Now notice again we've got a term times by 0, so that's going to simplify there. So if we simplify both sides and swap them so that the v2 is on the left hand side, we end up with 0 0.3 v2 is equal to 0 0.8. Dividing both sides now by 0.3 gives us an answer of 2.7 meters per second. Question 2 says that on a linear air track, vehicle A of mass 0.02 kilograms moving at 1.0 meters per second collides with vehicle B of mass 0.04 kilograms, which is initially at rest. After the collision, vehicle A bounces back to the left at 0.1 meters per second, and vehicle B moves to the right. So there's our sort of before picture there showing you the masses on the linear air track. But as always with these kind of questions, it's a good idea to sketch the before and after situation. So we've got our vehicle A of mass 0.02 kilograms moving to the right at a speed of 1.0 meters per second. We've then got vehicle B of mass 0.04 kilograms, which is stationary at 0 meters per second, and that's our before situation. And then after the collision, we've got our 0.02 kilogram mass moving to the left with a speed of 0.1 meters per second. And then we've got vehicle B at 0.04 kilograms moving to the right with some unknown speed V2. Part A says to find the momentum before the collision. Well, remember to find momentum before the collision, we use the expression m1u1 plus m2u2. So we can substitute in the numbers here to get 0.02 times 1.0 plus 0.04 times 0. Now notice that term there is times by 0, so we end up with 0.02 kilogram meters per second. Part B says to find the momentum of A after the collision. And this is for the first object, so we're going to use 1 as our subscript. So we've got P1 equals question mark. We know that the mass M1 is 0.02 kilograms and V1 is minus 0.1 meters per second. Because remember, after the collision, we're told that vehicle A is moving to the left, so we're going to take motion to the left as being negative and motion to the right as being positive. Writing down our equation, we have P1 equals M1 V1, and substituting in the numbers, we get 0.02 times minus 0.1 gives us a momentum of minus 0.002 kilogram meters per second. Part C says to calculate the speed of B after the collision. So this was the unknown quantity V2, and to do this we need to use our principle or law of conservation of momentum. So we have total momentum before equals total momentum after. Writing down our expression now, we have m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2, and substituting in the numbers now, Notice we've managed to skip a few steps because of our answers to parts A and B that we've already done. So there was our total momentum before the collision from part A, and there was our momentum of vehicle A after the collision, minus 0.002. And then we've got our mass of the second vehicle times the speed of the second vehicle. So rearranging this to get V2 on the left hand side, and adding 0.002 to both sides, we get 0.04 V2 is equal to 0.022. And dividing both sides by 0.04 now to get V2 on its own, we get V2 equals 0.55 meters per second. Part D says to calculate the kinetic energy before and after the collision. So we did this when we looked at inelastic collisions as well. So our expression for kinetic energy before the collision, remember, is given by EK before equals a half M1U1 squared plus a half M2U2 squared. 
we can then substitute in our numbers. So this is equal to a half times 0 0.02 times 1.0 squared plus a half times 0 0.04 times 0 squared. Now, again, we've got a times by 0 there, so that's going to just disappear. And so we're left with 0 0.01 joules from the left-hand side term. For the kinetic energy after the collision, we have Ek after equals a half m1v1 squared plus a half m2v2 squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get a half times 0 0.02 times minus 0 0.1 squared plus a half times 0 0.04 times 0 0.55 squared. So again, we've used a negative there because the vehicle A was moving to the left after the collision. And putting that into your calculator should give us an answer of 0 0.00615. But that is approximately equal to 0 0.01 joules if you round it up. And the reason we've done that is we've rounded it to two significant figures as used in the question. So you'll notice now that our EK before was 0 0.01 joules and our EK after is roughly 0 0.01 joules. So in part E, it asks us, is the collision elastic or inelastic? Well, it's elastic since kinetic energy is conserved. The kinetic energy has stayed roughly the same. The last question, question three, says that one vehicle approaches another and collides as shown below. The front vehicle is nudged forwards. So this is the situation of somebody driving in a car and somebody rear-ends them, which just means they hit them from behind. So in part A, it says to find the velocity of the rear vehicle after the collision. And the question gives us the diagram of the before and the after situation. So in part A, we're trying to find the velocity of this object here after the collision. So to do this, we need to use the law or principle of conservation of momentum. So we have total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. Writing down our equation in the expression form, we have m1u1 plus m2u2 equals m1v1 plus m2v2. And substituting in the numbers now, we get 1,200 times 12 plus 800 times 9 is equal to 1,200 V1 plus 800 times 11. So although it says V there in the diagram, I've added in the V1 here to keep us right with objects 1 and 2. And if we then find what the left-hand side is in total and subtract the 800 times 11 and then swap the sides so that we get V1 on the left-hand side, we get 1,200 V1 is equal to 12,800. Dividing both sides now by 1,200 to get V1 on its own gives us V1 equals 10.7 meters per second. Part B says, is the collision elastic or inelastic? Justify your answer by calculation. Well, remember to do this, we need to find the kinetic energy before the collision, then the kinetic energy after the collision. And if it's the case that we have two roughly similar answers or identical answers, then that means that kinetic energy is conserved, so it's an elastic collision. If, however, we find the kinetic energy before and after the collision, and we find that there's been lots of energy lost, then that means that kinetic energy is not conserved, and so it must be an inelastic collision. So let's see which one it is. So for the kinetic energy before the collision, we have Ek before equals a half m1u1 squared plus a half m2u2 squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get a half times 1200 times 12 squared plus a half times 800 times 9 squared. And putting that into your calculator should give an answer of about 118,800. And what I'm going to do there is round our answer to two significant figures. So this is approximately equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 5 joules if you round it to two significant figures. Doing the same now for the kinetic energy after the collision, we have Ek after equals a half m1v1 squared plus a half m2v2 squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get a half times 1200 times 10.7 squared plus a half times 800 times 11 squared. So putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 117,094. And again, we're going to round that up to two significant figures. So we have approximately equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 5 joules to two significant figures. So hopefully you can see now that we've got two answers that are the same once we've rounded them both to two significant figures. And therefore we can conclude that the collision is elastic since kinetic energy is conserved. That's all for this video folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.